Hello everyone and welcome to a new short episode from the Speculative Wildlife Research Center, where we reimagine monsters and nightmares from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today we will be looking at Oogie Boogie, the villain from classic Hello, uh, from classic Christmas, uh, from classic Halusmas movie, The Nightmare Before Christmas. This fella is an evil, somewhat humanoid burlap sack with a love of gambling and full of insects. Weird as it may sound, it translated really well to one, or rather more than one, real living organisms, and was really fun to work with. So here goes a thank you to patron Alec Foisy, who suggested this episode as well as the idea that transformed into this creature profile over in our Discord server and to all our patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. If you too are enjoying these videos, please consider supporting the channel by liking and subscribing or joining our Patreon, link available in the video's description. Now let's get to the scary part. While Halloween might be a great time for creepy and scary creatures, many would argue some are too dangerous to be considered as harmless fun, and one such creature is the insect known as Grillorapax lumisacus, the boogie cricket. Boogie crickets, also known as oogie crickets, or oogie boogie crickets to the chagrin of serious, no-nonsense entomologists all over the world, are a genus of New World raspy crickets that have changed from being omnivorous to being fully carnivorous. These crickets form large nests made of a mix of silk and vegetable matter taken from their environment, including twigs and grass blades. While the shape of these nests was originally quite amorphous, meant merely to help the crickets hide from predators, natural selection led to some configurations being favored over others until the nest started taking on its distinct modern appearance. This configuration, which to many resembles a bear standing up or even a humanoid figure, not only keeps the crickets protected inside the nest, but actively scares off predators. These nests will be kept in dark isolated areas where they are hard to find, the intimidating effect being useful should the nest be found by a predator. While these crickets do cooperate for their own protection and that of their young, this species is not really eusocial. Should anything cause the nest to be destroyed, every cricket will escape on its own to search for a new nest, or for members of its species with which to make a new one. Boogie crickets will feed on almost anything that approaches too much, and will often devour insects that stray too close to their colonies. However, single insects are poor nourishment for such big colonies. Instead, their main source of food is obtained in a very different manner. Every few nights, the boogie crickets will leave the safety of their nest and arrange themselves around their underground dwelling. In the dark, these insects shine with bioluminescence, produced by chemical reactions within their bodies. This bioluminescence will attract curious animals, which will see an easy meal in the crickets. However, while this potential prey is distracted, a third party will enter the scene. A solitary venomous snake will leave the cricket's nest unseen and bite, delivering a deadly neurotoxin. The cricket's prey will be paralyzed in seconds and will die in a matter of minutes allowing the boogie crickets to simply approach and tear their meal apart. In exchange for this valuable service, the snake will be allowed to live inside the cricket's nest, where both the snake and its eggs will be kept safe from harm. Given how dangerous these colonies can be, many attempts have been made to eradicate them or, at the very least, eliminate their presence in the immediate surroundings of human settlements. Yet, despite all these measures, the hunt for thrills can overpower caution quite easily. In many places, children who are too bold and too reckless have been known to keep the presence of one of these colonies hidden, 
and play with it without a fear in the world. These children will often gamble during their games, but rather than betting money or any valuable objects, losers will have to go to the colony's nest and leave food for it, usually insects or other small animals, and escape before being targeted by the snake's deadly bite. And that's it for a speculative biology look into Oogie Boogie. Following in the theme of invertebrates for this Halloween season, we reimagined this guy as a species of bright, colonial crickets, although this time it fits quite well with the original version of the character, who was full of bugs already. The one snake that usually appears as Oogie Boogie's tongue, I decided to leave as a snake, but giving it a mutually beneficial symbiosis with the crickets, similar to that of some species of tarantulas and frogs which, in case you didn't know, involves tarantulas protecting small frogs from predators, while the frogs protect the tarantulas' eggs from ants, and is the cutest thing in the world. The glow presented by Oogie Boogie and his gaudy lair was also easily adapted, as bioluminescence is common in lots of insects, although the gambling aspect had to be adapted into an external matter since, despite all our research and experimentation, it seems insects are not that into games of chance. While some animals, including birds, do enjoy gambling, nothing like that has ever been observed in insects. In the end, I really like how this version of Oogie Boogie turned out, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And remember, if there's anything spooky you'd like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.